Hi guys, Olive here. Today I'm here to bring you an author spotlight where I will be focusing on the historian Robert K. Massey, specifically his four books on Russian history. Robert K. Massey, or Robert Kinlock Massey, was born in 1929. He is an American historian. He studied at both Yale and Oxford, respectively. He is well known internationally for his expertise on the Romanov family. He has written seven books total, some of which were co-authored by his wife at the time, Suzanne Massey, a historian herself. Not all of the books he has authored are on the Romanov family. Some of them deal with entirely different topics. In this video, I'm just going to talk about the big four, the four most well-known books on the Romana family that Robert K. Massey has written. I have read all four and really enjoyed all four, and I'm excited to talk to you about them. My copies of his books are very well loved. This one does not have a dust jacket, and this one's dust jacket has seen better days. So as I talk about each book, you can just see the cover art over here. I am going to talk about his books in the order that they were published. After I am done talking about all four, I will tell you where I think you should start with Robert K. Massey if you've never read any of his biographies before. So since we're starting at the very beginning, I am going to start with Nicholas and Alexandra, which was not only Robert K. Massey's first published book, but his first book on the Romana family, which was published originally in 1967. Robert K. Massey did not study Russian history when he was at university. He studied other aspects of history, but he originally became interested in the Romanov family when his son was born with hemophilia. If you are not aware, the son of Nicholas and Alexandra, whose name was Alexei, was born a hemophiliac, which had long-running personal consequences for the family, as well as political consequences based on what was happening within the royal family at that time. I think we can assume that Robert K. Massey identified pretty strongly with and connected to the history of Nicholas and Alexandra because he was going through something similar to what they went through in having a son who was a hemophiliac. It is also my belief that this is the book that most people have read of Robert K. Massey's, if only because it was published so long ago. If you are not familiar with the story of Nicholas and Alexandra, Nicholas II was the last Tsar of Russia born to Alexander III, who died rather suddenly. When Alexander III was on his deathbed, Nicholas needed to marry in order for him to obtain the throne based on the succession rules that Paul had instituted many years before. Nicholas II married his sweetheart, Alex of Hesse from Germany, right before his father died, and then they both ascended to the throne together. She and Nicholas went on to have five children together, the first four, being girls. Russia obviously had had empresses before that, but because of the succession rules that I just mentioned that Paul I, Catherine the Great's son, instituted, women were no longer allowed to rise to the throne. And so it was vitally important that Nicholas and Alexandra eventually have a boy, which they did, their fifth child, Alexei, was in fact a boy, but he was also born a hemophiliac. Hemophilia is a disease that is passed from mothers to sons based on a specific gene that is carried down throughout the generations. This gene was pretty prolific in royal families at the time, especially since Alexandra in her gene pool was very well connected to other royal families in Europe at the time. And so although Nicholas and Alexandra did end up having the son that both they and Russia were desperately wanting, he was born with an incurable illness. Before Alexei was born and definitely after this, Alexandra was prone to a lot of different illnesses and also depression. Her desperation to find something, anything to help Alexei when he would hurt himself and would be bleeding, since hemophilia keeps your blood from clotting, eventually led her down some dark avenues, including the ushering in of Rasputin to the lives of the Romanovs. This was the first book of Robert K. Massey's that I had read. Although the story of Nicholas and Alexandra was not foreign to me, this book gave me so much more detail than I had before. A lot of that detail has stuck with me to this day because of how graceful Robert K. Massey's writing is. He really communicated the feelings that I have always had about Nicholas and Alexandra in that they were such a beautiful family, 
but they were absolutely fated for tragedy. Like I said, I believe that this is the most popular of Robert K. Massey's works, not just because it is so old, but because it is so accessible. At the core of it, it is a love story, and that really comes through. The affection that the family had for each other really sings through the way he tells the story. He really did his research, and you can tell how much he cared about this family. Again, I'm assuming because he felt so personally connected to them based on that shared experience that he had with them. It is one of my favorite books for a reason and an incredibly strong debut biography. The next book that Robert K. Massey wrote was called Peter the Great, His Life and World, which was published in 1980 and won the 1981 Pulitzer Prize for Biography. This is the longest book that he wrote. My edition has a little over 900 pages, including all of the notes and the index. This is a very hefty book and for me, a little bit of an uneven one. But that very well may be because I am more interested in certain aspects of Peter the Great's life and not as interested in others. Peter the Great is a monumental figure in Russian history, both literally and figuratively. He was a huge, huge man, six foot seven, I believe he was. And his legacy is very long reaching. Peter the Great was born to the second Romanov Tsar of Russia, Alexei. He didn't immediately ascend to the throne after his father died. There were a few family squabbles that had to happen first. But of course, after he did, he achieved more than any other Russian ruler had up to that point. He founded and created the city of St. Petersburg on a former marsh. He built Russia's first fleet. He traveled the West when no Russian czar ever had. He insisted that his people come into modernity, whether he had to drag them kicking and screaming to do it. As you can probably gather by the page count, this is an extensive and very impressive history of Peter's life. The book starts off with kind of a window into what Moscow was like when Peter the Great was born. It then talks about Peter the Great's childhood, the family dynamics that were going on at the time. Peter the Great was born to a second wife of Alexei, and there were issues with the first wife's side of the family. This book talks about Peter the Great's education, his travels in the West, his fascination with anything dealing with boats, his use of his knowledge that he gained in the West to then build Russia's first fleet, his attempts at modernizing Russia through sometimes violent, brutal means. This book also talks about what was going on with the Orthodox Church at the time and the relationship between Peter the Great and the Patriarch. That part I had less interest in, but that's probably just because I am not super interested in orthodoxy as it stands. But this book has any detail that you would ever want to know about Peter the Great. If you want something that's really going to give you a full picture of who he was as a person, because this book definitely talks about his personality, his relationships with his wives, his children, anything that you want to know, you can find it in this book, which for me is the mark of a truly great biography. And obviously people at the Pulitzer Prize agree. The third book I'm going to talk about was published in 1995, and that book is called The Romanovs, The Final Chapter. This is the shortest of Robert K. Massey's books. It is also the one that I have read the most recently, having just finished it last month. This is a book about what happened that fateful night in Ekaterinburg when the Romanov family was sentenced to death. The book starts off right away talking about the execution of the Romanov family, which I will not lie to you, was extremely difficult to read. Robert K. Massey does not gloss over it. He does not attempt to make it more palatable with his writing. He tells it like it was, which I think is important for setting the tone for the book and I think is important for people to realize. The book then goes on to talk about how the remains of the Romanov family were discovered. It talks about the forensic efforts that were made by many different forensic teams from around the world to identify if these were the bones of the Romanov family, and if so, which bones belong to whom. There is also a very long section of the book, I'd say it comprises about half of the book's content overall, 
talking about all the pretenders who have come out of the woodwork since the execution of the Romana family claiming to be one of the family members. Most famously is Anna Anderson who claimed to be Anastasia. Although the beginning part was very difficult to read, this was a very enjoyable book to read. It almost read like kind of a true crime type of a book because of the investigation aspect. Again, Robert K. Massey's writing is extremely skillful. This is a man who can summarize how DNA works in about two sentences. I also very much appreciated from a personal standpoint his matter-of-fact manner of saying all of these pretenders to the throne were fake, everyone died, we have the evidence now to prove that they died. That was very well appreciated in my eyes, especially since there are all of these cultural things out there um, taking inspiration from the Romano family and claiming that someone may have survived. The first section of this book shows you how impossible that would have been. I personally think anything, including the animated movie that was made, is extremely disrespectful to the family. I don't think it's cute to disrespect the memory of someone who was executed who was entirely innocent. You can agree with me or not agree with me. I just personally don't find it cute to disrespect the memory of the dead, even if it is twirling around and singing. So this is a difficult read. It is not one that I would recommend you reading if you don't have a substantial knowledge of the Ramama family because this book talks extensively about the family dynamics between the extended Ramama family and then their descendants to the people who are currently living who are descended from the Ramama family. And it's also important for you to have kind of a baseline of knowledge of Nicholas and Alexandra and the Russian Revolution and all of those things. I think that's helpful to know before reading this book. And then lastly, Robert K. Massey's most recently published book is called Catherine the Great, A Portrait of a Woman, which was published in 2011. Similarly to Empress Alexandra, who came many, many years after her, Catherine the Great was born a German princess who was brought to Russia to marry the next emperor. Empress Elizabeth, who happened to be Peter the Great's daughter, was reigning at the time and had no children of her own. Thus, her heir was her nephew, Peter III, the son of her sister. Peter III was a very interesting, almost asexual, kind of a permanent child figure who was obsessed with playing war. Sophia, later Catherine, was brought to Russia to marry him. And although she had hesitations at first, she kind of fell in love with Russia as a whole, learning the language, converting to orthodoxy, developing a fondness for the people and the lifestyle and the culture. She really took to the idea of becoming empress and so set about doing that, even if it meant marrying someone foul. In order to gain the power she wanted, she obviously had to marry Peter, which she did which resulted in a very interesting marriage. And by interesting, I mean horrible. But of course, it interests all of us the most as to what happened after Catherine the Great became the sole leader of Russia after Peter III's death. Catherine the Great may be the most well-known Romanov Tsar, even though she was not a Romanov. It seems like people know her name even more so than Peter the Great. But ironically enough, it was Peter the Great who she found as one of the biggest inspirations in her leadership style. Catherine wanted to continue Peter the Great's work in westernizing Russia. She was extremely interested in philosophy and showed a great interest in more democratic leadership styles, although she was a firm believer in autocracy. She had several children, only one of which was legitimate, Paul I, who then became emperor. She had many different men cycle in and out of her life, which this book documents fully. She was extremely competent, extremely forward-thinking, just generally a fascinating woman to read about. Behind Nicholas and Alexandra, I found this to be the most readable of Robert K. Massey's biographies. Because it was the book that was written the most recently, I feel like the tone of it and the language used in it is the most familiar. It is long enough to give a substantial enough amount of detail without being a 900 page book like the Peter the Great biography. So those are some details about the four Russian history books that Robert K. Massey has published that I have also read. I enjoyed all of these books, but again, as you probably could tell, to differing extents. I would also recommend them differently, 
especially if you do not have a large background in Russian history. I would definitely suggest that if you're starting out with Russian history in general, that you start with Robert K. Massey, particularly with Nicholas and Alexandra. I say that because the core of Nicholas and Alexandra's story is a tragic love story. It almost seems like it didn't happen because it is so tragic and it was so fraught with drama and so filled with sadness at times, but it is also uplifting in reading about how much this family loved each other, how good of a man Nicholas II was, although he was a very very poor leader. So definitely start with Nicholas and Alexandra. And if you want more of their story, you can go on to the final days of the Romanovs. However, if you want to move on to a different area of Romanov history after you read Nicholas and Alexandra, I would suggest you move on to Catherine the Great. If you chose not to read the final days of the Romanovs right after Nicholas and Alexandra, that would be the one I suggest you read next since it is a little bit more modern then the Peter the Great biography, which I would recommend to read last. They are all great books. I just believe that they would be digestible to different people at different times, and I think you need a toe in the water of Russian history before you read a 900-page biography of Peter the Great. Of course, for the sake of time and the sake of your ears, since I can talk them off talking about Russian history, I have extremely condense the history of these people into just a few minute summaries of what their lives were all about. Please let me know if you have read any of these Robert K. Massey biographies, if you've enjoyed them. I'd love to hear what you enjoyed about them, if you want to move on to any of the others, or if you just want to talk Russian history in general. I am always up for that. You can do it in the comment section down below. I'm also accessible on a variety of places of social media, and I will leave the links in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Go read some Russian history, and I'll see you next time. Bye.